Nobody chooses to live in poverty. It's not something that we aspire to as individuals. The electricity's jumped up, the gas has jumped up. Everything's just jumping up. And it's scary. The way things are going, there'll be no family able to live. Working away, doing everything, paid all my bills, made sure my Wayne had like his lunch money or whatever it is he had to have to be left with 14 pence and hadn't even went food shopping yet. Like, how am I going to feed my Wayne? A week and a half of your pension money's away, you pay your gas, your electricity, your life insurance. So you've got four weeks to live, but you've only got two and a half weeks pension left to live after. It's more expensive to be poor, whether it be prepayment meters where you're paying slightly more for your energy and in advance, or indeed it could be that you are reliant on public transport, which is hugely expensive. It's OK to have a job, but you need to get to the job and back to the job in order to sustain it. Getting to work was a problem buying a bus pass, £20 a week, and the buses were not turning up. Many people are working and still not working themselves out of poverty. They're, they're working themselves into poverty. Sadly, we have a system just now which is counterproductive because it doesn't assist people. In fact, arguably, it traps people in the poverty that they find themselves in. Since I lost my partner, it's just... I hate being stuck in the house all day. Isolation and loneliness, food insecurity, fuel poverty, these are not new problems for us. These are historical problems. Food insecurity was a problem when I was a child. My name's Terry. I'm a community development worker based in Fergusley Park. For my entire life, the area has been blighted by societal ills, if you like. There's been three major regeneration attempts in the area by three different governments of three different political parties, yet poverty still plagues us. So it's not a question of political ideology. For these persistent problems to still be there, then maybe it's time we started thinking about approaching it differently. I work with a group called Darkwood Crew. This group perform a 26 mile round trip every day as part of a surplus food run. Food that would have otherwise been thrown in the bin and make that available to local people by way of a community market. A very dignified approach, it's literally like a shopping experience. Go to the market on a Thursday, just taking a stock up and like basic things. Go to the wee lunch club three days a week. It's good just to get out of the house. Now we're up to 40 odd members. And if we can help each other, we do all help each other. If you empower local people, truly empower local people, then you'll be pleasantly surprised at the solutions that they find. The community centre did contact me with food bags and stuff. It couldn't have came at a better time. Just asked, is there any jobs going? I now work in the community shop and post office. Love not getting the bus. Absolutely love it. I actually feel a difference within my mental health as well. Living wage is a lot better. And the fact it's there to help the community, I think that's what I love the most. Certainly over the past couple of years, as a community development worker, that rebuilt my confidence levels, gave me my voice back, if you like. So I'm at uni just now doing the community development degree. But it doesn't take me to have a degree from Glasgow Uni to know that we could be doing things a lot better than we are at the moment. Whilst we're lifting people out of poverty, other structural decisions are landing them back in. We need to stop pulling folks out the river and, and go upstream and work out why they're falling in. If the government had a strategy in place which married up with that dignified approach that communities have adopted across the country, then we'd be in a much more fortunate position than we are just now. 
We need a welfare state which is rooted in dignity and respect. <laughs>